Hey, good morning. It's 10, 11 a.m. It is Thursday, December 28th. I just wanted to come on here and make a video because I got some downloads this morning. Um, not real, real, like, major downloads, but just I wanted to share them anyway. So, um, you know, it's a few days after Christmas, and I've just been, like, kind of kicking back. I have been, like, you know, like kind of organizing some of my <sighs> things in my closet, trying to make some sense of stuff throwing things away, um, going through drawers, you know, just trying to have as less, less stuff as I possibly can. I just, just don't want any clutter around here. Trying to keep busy, right? Um, I'm trying not to focus. I am focused on content. I want to make content. I don't know what's going on with Patreon. So I feel kind of, you know, slowed down, which kind of, you know, kind of frustrates me a little bit. But anyway, so let me get into these messages. Oh, I did want to mention that I had noticed a, um, today I was kind of laying in bed and I was on YouTube. Now I have like a little, um, like a Kindle. All right. And it's not, what do you call it? it? I don't really use it like for, you know, anything major. Like right now I'm making this video on my, my tablet that I got. I think it's called like an Astro sign, um, tablet. This particular the Kindle is like, they're two separate things. So anyway, I was looking at my Kindle and I was watching YouTube and, um, I wasn't doing any searches on Prince Alamehu, but this particular person who is a descendant of Prince Alamehu, uh, was posting videos. Apparently he does a lot of research. And so, um, I decided to subscribe to him. And it's funny because, you know, there's a thing called synchronicity, things that kind of happen in sync with like your, your life journey. And, you know, um, I've noticed that this happens a lot, you know, because like I said, I wasn't looking for this particular person's channel. I wasn't even on the Prince Alamehu topic in my head, but, you know, I was glad that this particular channel popped up and I did subscribe. So I'm looking forward to taking a look at all his videos. Okay. So the first message that I got in, um, for my intuitive messages was that people wish that I was into politics. Um, you know, I, it's funny because like when I used to, some of my workplaces, you know, um, I don't know if it was a kind of probably a part of my harassment, like, because you know, like when you're being targeted, people want to ask you questions and it's, it's really messed up because no matter what your answer is, they want to be argumentative, right? So people would love to start political arguments with me. And I would tell them like, you know, I'm not into politics and like, you're not into politics. You're, you have all these opinions and blow, you're not into, po I am totally not into politics. Um, I, you know, I, I know that it has to exist. Like I understand we have to have the president we have to have governors, we have to have senators, we have to have all of those things in our country and in other countries, because if we didn't have any rulership, things would really, really get out of hand. Okay. But um, uh, you know, I've, it, I don't know. I'm just more spiritual. I, I do think that, you know, um, there should be more ethics brought to leadership roles. And, and like I said, you know, we live in a world, we do live in hell. Okay. We live in hell. So a lot of people are walking around thinking that they're doing the right thing when they're doing the wrong thing. Like some people, um, I'm sure the people at the top of that pyramid, when I was being targeted, were presenting this as, well, she's a villain because she doesn't go to church, okay? So the people on the lower part of the pyramid thinking that they're doing doing the right thing by bullying people to make a person conform, that's not how you handle things. You know, as a leader, <laughs> I, you know, anyway, I'm not going to go into it, but th the point is, is that I feel as though politics it's very hard to find good leaders in politics because of the corruption and only one person taking a seat in one of those type of organizations or the political arena is not, I don't believe that's going to create any change. I don't believe I should put any effort into trying to change a, a system that is, I believe we're here. Earth is hell. Okay. And I personally just feel as though I accept it. I'm only trying to survive in it. I've dealt with too much negativity and I just want to stay a part of it. That's just how I am. But I, I do appreciate people who have that sort of confidence in me. Thank you. Also, um, people also do accept that the earth is hell. They just, they, it, that's obvious. Okay. Um, I don't believe that there is any other stage in our a spiritual cycle that is worse than this place. 
you know, so um, that's interesting. But, you know, I, I think most people kind of inherently know that this place is hell. Also, um, there's a lot of, um, oh, there's a lot of people who are, are, are in arguments. Like this particular group that I, I'm associated with. Some of the people, like I said, some of these people I really think are great. And then there's some of the people who I really wish didn't exist. But there's a lot of finger pointing and arguing that's going on in this group because now that I put things into perspective, um, they're talking about the association with the Nazis and some of the shit that went down. It's kind of like, well, they 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 don't want to take responsibility, so it's like the blame type thing going on. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. That's not my problem or whatever. My um, it's not my issue. Meaning like how people deal with within that little social circle, but. You know, I just wish this would never happen in the first place. This is a great example, though, of political corruption. This use this as an example. You know what I mean? And then look at the large participation in it. And this is another example. So some people would say, well, the logical decision would be, since you understand how these work, Maria, maybe you should be in politics. It just doesn't appeal to me. You know, because I feel as though if I got in politics, then I would be even more attacked. You know what I mean? And like I said, I, it just... Whatever. I'm just trying to get through hell. That's all I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to coast through it all. Trying to duck, you know, duck and dodge bullets and just trying to survive. I, I really, I hate this system. I hate it. You know, I hate the way things are on the earth. I hate the mentality of the average person. They just, they, it's just like corrupt from the very ground up. Anyway, um, there are, luckily, you know, I also got in my, my intuitive messages that there's still some people that I can still have respect for. You know, um, there's some people I can, I, you just cannot bring me to have any respect for. You know what I mean? I can be cordial only because like that last video that I made about, um, you know, stating how I, I'm very frustrated by the stagnant movement of these people who follow me and associate with me while I'm sitting here trying I'm always worried I always feel like I'm always worried you know what I mean I've, I've never had a moment's rest um and their narcissism is like well you know she needs to just relax or calm down you don't I don't have based on that 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 issue in my cold moon um video I think I made it pretty clear why I can't trust these people so, you know, but luckily I do feel like there are some people, because I don't want to live in this world feeling like I have to hate everybody. You know, these people who did all this shit and were just absolutely, um, you know, uh, insensitive to my suffering. In this case, you know, I, I can't bring myself to forgive, especially since there's no way in the world they couldn't know. Uh, maybe it may not have, like, thought about it or in the perspective of, like, the Joseph Mengele, but they certainly knew that they were enacting their white supremacy, so no. But I'm glad that there are certain individuals that I still can have respect for. Um, also, white people do not, white people feel that I am not a threat to them. What I mean by that is like they don't feel like I'm angry and vengeful and I want to take out revenge on them and I'm, you know, I'm not, no, I, I'm absolutely not interested in taking revenge out on white people, nor do I have any, like, I'm acknowledging what happened, okay? But we live in hell, and <laughs> and certain people s s side with that, you know what I mean? And I can't change that. So, but I, at the same time, you know, I, I, this is not what it's about. It's about getting through this horrible place. I just want to get, I just want to get to my final destination um, without having to interact with other people as much as possible. You know what I mean? Um, not just white people. I'm talking about black people, uh, everybody. Because of their vile treatment and their behavior. But I do believe that this, this whole issue and this whole argument was fueled um, by race mainly. Um, but no, I have no interest in like, you know, retaliating against white people. Like I said, my only concern right now is being able to make money, uh, make a living and move on with my life. And prepare for, you know, when I, as I get older. And I do want to record the process of getting older and... And, of course, the dying process, you know. I'm, I'm like, really real into this sort of stuff, you know. And, um, you know, I don't want to get um, caught up in petty arguments based on um, who needs to feel superior. I, I don't, I, you know, to me, it makes no sense for, for somebody to want to be proud of being in control or being 
the ruler or the or the powerful one in a place that I look at as hell. That's how I look at it. So I'm not interested in trying to like promote supremacy or whatever. You know, I'm just trying to survive. Anyway, also, um, I got the message that there's a lot of people who find it odd or interesting that I have such an eclectic taste in music. And um, I find that funny because I think just, just like, you know, um, the ignorance of a lot of people who don't know, like, history. You know, they, they know that Egyptians existed, but they don't really think about their skin color or, you know, anything like that. Um, black people have played a large role in the music, in music history. Um, and people don't really realize it. I know that my father listened to country music, and I know that um, people used to laugh because when I was younger, I listened to a lot of British bands and stuff, and people would, like, you know, try to say that I was trying to be white because I liked, you know, different kinds of music. I mean, I liked all kinds of music. Um, I like some of the contemporary music, like, you know, uh, I guess the Perry Como type stuff that people kind of roll their eyes at. I like a lot of British rock bands um, because they fucking kick ass. And, um, you know, I remember my dad was a huge country music fan. I didn't like country so much as a kid, but as I got older, I'm like, man, this stuff's really good. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, um, black people have been in the country music industry. I, I'm thinking about um, a one particular person. His name was D. Ford Bailey. He was known as the Harmonic, harmonic Wizard. Um, he was one of the first black performers on the Grand Old Opry back in the 19, I think the 1920s or 1930s, somewhere around there. Um, and then, of course, you know, Charlie Pride, he was a, an African-American uh, black singer who I love. I thought he had a great baritone voice. Um, and I'm sure he went through hell um, trying to get his career off. And people, just like, you know, when Billy the Cowboy was getting, like, bashed and stuff, I'm pretty sure you know, Charlie Pride was getting bashed too. But you know what? Charlie Pride had every right to sit up there and sing his music. And I think he did a wonderful job doing it. Anyway, um, also, um, oh, you know, you know what D4 Bailey did? He was also one of the first performers to have, um, to, recorded his, to have his music recorded in Nashville. So, you know, like I said, I'm not saying people have to have black history as a curriculum at school or anything like that. But, you know, we get we get poked fun of a lot for our choices, things that we do. But it, 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 it's almost like, you know, um, when, when you, like, for example, you're in a large crowd, right? And they're playing music. There's a bunch of people in there, that crowd, right? There's, like, black people. There's white people. There's Mexican. There's Chinese. There's everyone, right? And it's like, you know, let's just say, for example, a rock song comes on. Well, uh, spontaneously comes on. And while everybody's out in that crowd, is it if if a white performer comes on uh, the stage, are are people of color supposed to just plug their ears and not like it? It's like you know, some people think that music should be separate, segregated, or something. It's like I can't help it if something seems appealing to me. I can't help it if the melody is nice. I can't help it if I relate to the lyrics. Like you know, there's certain songs that. Um, that express your feeling, you know what I mean? And I, you know, a lot of white artists was, were able to express my feelings through their songs, you know? So, you know, I, I think that when, when people would bully me about my music days, I used to think that they were being small. I used to think that they were being petty and I knew that they were being ignorant. Also, um, you know what? The banjo, the, that's an instrument that is used a lot in country music. The banjo is actually an, a, a, an instrument that came from Africa which a lot of people don't know because they don't know history, but that's a fact. Anyway, so yeah, I love music. Um, music is something that I, I pretty much listen to music all day, okay? Um, there's sometimes where I'm like, okay, I just want to shut it off, but, you know, I listen to, mostly I like a lot of the 60s type folk music. I think that's really cool to me. Um, I like some of my parents' music. I know my parents used to listen st to stuff like the platters and stuff like that. And um, my dad was like into country. We listened to Motown music and we listened to, um, you know, like Dean Martin, Nat Cole type stuff. As a matter of fact, I would say Nat Cole was one of the first artists that I remember singing to as a kid, you know. So 
I mean, I just, I just like everything. And of course, you know, um, I don't really like a whole lot of the martyr music. Um, sometimes I'll hear a few bands. I would say since like the 1990s, um, you know, it's been really hard to find music that really entertains me. I would say like some of the, the coolest people that I've seen since that time period, I would say I liked, there was a band called the White Stripes. I thought they were pretty good. Um, I also liked, oh, the Fleet Foxes. Now, when I first heard them, I went to, like, a place called, was it Borders Books? Yeah, because Borders Books went out of business. But I was thinking, I think it was back in 2008, I was, like, strolling through the book aisle, and I could hear their music on the, the thing. And I, I asked the person behind the counter, I'm like, who is that? They're fucking amazing. Um, and he told me who they were, and I immediately purchased the CD. I took it home, and it was, like my prized possession I mean there was this one song on there that and maybe that maybe the writer didn't mean for it to have meaning in the way that um it did but it was just deep as a matter of fact I kept thinking I could make a movie off of this fucking song and and the music was so like it's almost like I don't know um I want to say otherworldly like it, it's beautiful it's spiritual it just felt like um, like somebody was like you're running through a spring forest. That's exactly how it feels. And if a person is being asked to ignore the power of that music, just because I'm black, like if, if somebody's like, if that music, since that music was playing on in, in uh, Borders books, and for me to not acknowledge that, regardless of my color, I mean, it just seems silly. You know what I mean? It seems silly to to think that I'm not supposed to like something that brilliant. Silly. Anyway. Also, a lot of people are talking about me, um, and I can feel it in my solar plexus. You know, I'm very sensitive. I'm extremely psychic, so I can sense those things. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I think I've said enough. Um, I will probably be doing some videos throughout the day as thoughts come filtering in my mind. Um, I do appreciate the support that I have gotten. Um, you know, it's been very hard. And I, you know, and I'm not trying to, um, I really want to have, be cordial with this group that, I am associated with, you know, like I said, there are certain members, I can't change how I feel about them. I can't, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I can't do it. But um, I do think that it's important for me to move on and move on in peace. I, I did get some like negative readings on a particular person and I can think, you know, I'm not even going to bring it up. I just, what I want to do is I want to get on with my life and I want to do so enthusiastically and with a lot of energy and power because um, I feel stagnated right now because of the, the Patreon issue, and I'm the kind of person, I have a hell of a lot of things to say, a lot of things I want to teach, a lot of things I want to share, so I am, I don't think, I think I will be able to provide content till the day that I die, so I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, wrapping up this video, take care y'all.